friends how are you i hope you are well children striving for success without doing any hard work is like to try harvesting where you have not planted anything so the success is you can say some of little efforts day in and day out so it is better try to make today better than before so let us start today's topic what i am going to explain is about molar specific heat capacity previous lesson previous video i explain about the specific heat capacity or you can say specific heat what i would i mentioned that this is delta q upon m into delta t that means specific heat capacity is defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of unit mass of a substance by unit that is the matter we discussed in previous video that is specific heat capacity i would like to say that the specific heat capacity may be at constant temperature that means i want to say that if it is the matter of isothermal process see here isothermal process isothermal process means the process where the temperature remains constant but there will be a transfer of heat to maintain temperature con constant in isothermal process there will be a transfer of heat from the system to the surrounding because we have to maintain the temperature constant that means i want to say that in isothermal process this change in temperature is equal to zero if it is change in temperature zero then i can say that specific heat capacity specific heat capacity in this isothermal process is equal to delta q upon m into zero that means this is infinity clear if it is a adiabatic process in this process there will be no transfer of heat in adiabatic process there is no transfer of heat energy that means the change in heat energy will be equal to zero so in that case i can say that specific heat capacity in adiabatic process is equal to zero upon m into delta t i can say that is equal to zero all this matter why did i discuss because today's topic is about the molar specific heat capacity previous chapter previous video i discussed about the specific heat capacity but today is little different from previous video what different we find here so that means specific heat capacity may be between G, anything between zero and infinity for in case of a gaseous substance that means today i in this video i am going to explain about the molar specific heat capacity that means you can say specific heat capacity of gaseous substances so in case of gaseous substances the specific heat capacity may be anything between zero and infinity listen carefully children so so far as the specific heat of 
gas is concerned gas is associated it is not wise to measure the gas from its mass because we know that suppose you see that two container are there two different types of gases are there one oxygen one nitrogen two different gases are there suppose i have taken equal value if i don't know which gases are there i can find its mass i can find its mass from its value without knowing which gases are there but if both volume are equal i can say number of moles of gas are equal so here we are in the study according to avogadro's law under similar conditions of temperature and pressure equal volume of all gases contain equal number of molecules that means whenever we discuss about the molar specific heat that means specific heat of gases in place of a mass we consider number of a mole so i can say that molar specific heat capacity or molar specific heat it is defined as molar specific heat capacity the quantity of heat energy absorbed or rejected to change unit mole of unit mole of heat by unit means 1 degree celsius or 1 kelvin so molar specific heat of gas is the quantity of heat energy absorbed or rejected to change unit mole of heat by unit 1 degree celsius or 1 kelvin so in this case in place of the mass i am using the term mole see here so i can write that molar specific heat capacity and using the letter c so i can write this is delta q upon mu into delta t previously i used the mass now i am using the mole your mu stands for mole of the substance so i can say that quantity of heat energy absorbed to raise the temperature of one mole of substance by 1 degree celsius this is the specific heat sorry molar specific heat capacity we use for gaseous substances but one more problem is there what problem here molar specific heat capacity two types are there what are the two types listen carefully see here it may be at constant pressure or it may be at constant volume suppose you see that this is a container here some gas is there you think that mu mole of gas is present in this container i am supplying heat and providing heat energy ultimately its temperature will change suppose okay 
This is the container. I provide the heat. Instead of providing the heat, its pressure is remain constant. Since the pressure is constant, definitely its volume will increase. Some water mix I have to draw. Okay, now it is okay. See here. Now I provided the heat. So ultimately the temperature also rising. At the same time, volume is expanding. Now suppose here is the pressure P. The pressure may be this one like this, whatever it may be. Here also pressure is same. I said that we are discussing about the constant pressure. But the volume is increasing. Here is the volume V. Here it became V plus delta V. That means when the pressure is constant, volume is increasing. So the molar specific heat capacity at constant pressure is equal to delta Q upon mu into delta T. So I can write that specific molar specific heat at constant pressure is equal to delta Q upon mu into delta T. But in this case, what is happening? Volume is increasing. Suppose I supplied the heat energy delta Q. Now second case you see that. Suppose this is the container. We have taken one mole of gas. In this case the temperature T. In this case the temperature will be T plus delta T. Here the temperature is T. Now I want to keep its volume constant. So if I keep the volume constant. That means I have to draw that a same size. It should be same volume. Okay. Suppose this volume is constant. Means here is V. Here is V. Temperature ultimately when you are supplying the heat. Suppose the heat what I am supplying. I have mentioned here delta Q dash. So in this case. The volume is remain constant. But what about the pressure. Ultimately the pressure will increase. Here volume constant because the container I have taken very strong container. It is not allowing to increase its volume. But since we are providing heat energy, ultimately its pressure will increase. So temperature will increase no doubt both cases. Here the temperature T, here also temperature T plus delta T. Whenever we are supplying the heat, the temperature is increasing no doubt at all. But now we divide the molar specific heat into two parts. One is the specific heat at constant pressure. Another one is the specific heat at constant volume. So same thing I can write the formula specific heat at constant volume that is delta Q upon mu into delta T. But one difference is there. The difference between delta Q and delta Q dash. In this case delta Q is greater than delta Q dash because to increase its volume I have to put some extra work. That means delta Q I can write that delta Q dash plus work. Since its volume we have to increase we have to do some additional work. That means I can say that this delta Q is equal to delta Q dash plus W or I can say that this delta Q is greater than delta Q dash. Okay. So delta Q in case of the constant pressure and delta Q dash in case of the constant 
volume. So I can say that this molar specific heat at constant pressure greater than molar specific heat at constant volume. Between these two terms, there is a beautiful relation is there. What we study in thermodynamics. So the relation is Cp minus Cv is equal to R. This R is called the ideal gas constant. This formula is called Mayer's formula. Okay. So so far as your 11th and 12th class is concerned, the derivation of these things say no need. Okay. Still more things say if you need in thermodynamics definitely I will explain no doubt. So the Cp minus Cv is equal to R where R is a ideal gas constant. Its value is 8.31 Joule per mole per Kelvin. So children I hope you might have understood. Then what about it say? Is sign it? Can you say? See here. The SI unit is, I can write, this is Joule per mole per Kelvin, sorry, Joule per mole per Kelvin. So children, for this video, I think this is enough for today. So definite, in the next video, I shall explain some more facts. Until then, bye. Thanks.